case of when. When am I going to take that opportunity to take him out? Chisanga Malata here with uh, a man who needs no introduction. Uh, the one, the only, Ian Machado. Gary, Ian, how you doing, mate? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. A bit disappointed. I should be on a flight to Las Vegas, but um, ah. boss has decided to cancel the trip because obviously Connor is uh, not fighting. So I'm definitely going to have a bit of FOMO. It's not that big at the moment, but I know come way in days, way in day, and I come, see you. Come Saturday morning. When you're yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be, I'll be oh. absolutely, yeah. I'll be, I'll be gutted. But uh, anyway, we're not here to talk about my FOMO. We're here to talk about you. But, but before we talk about fighting, how's Leo doing? Dude, I was going to ask you, how's your, how's your family doing? He's great. He's loving life. He's so vocal at this point. He's, he's dropping in change between Portuguese and English now, which is quite cool. And it's just cool to see his journey of, of like growth. Like this week, you know, as like as a father, it just like one day and it's like, where did that come from? He's just speaking so much more now. Like he's, he's mirroring every little word. And I'm like, oh my God, like it's going to be no time to leave a three year old run around going, I'm going to go. See you later. Like, bye. I'm like, all right. It's just shows like people have always said, like, it, it goes by fast. And I'm seeing it more and more now. Like, he's just getting taller. He's getting cuter. I'm just like, oh, please, please stay at this age. You've literally echoed my sentiment. Yesterday, um, me and my daughter were going through an animal book. And then she just pointed and said walrus. And I was like, what? How have you, how have you, how have you <laughs> what a walrus is? Yeah. As, as you said, it like it blows my mind how quickly they uh, mm. they grow, and I just want her to stay this young for as long yeah. as possible. But I know it it's puts that. it into perspective how fast time is because your your daughter, and my son, they're not they're 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 similar in age, but they're not like they're way older than what they are. Like, is in the way they're developing is way faster than we have ever thought they would be at that age. And it's like, oh, wow, okay, okay. I can see you, like, getting married and having kids and everything in, like, five years. Like, that's the <laughs> Like, it's, it's yeah. you're going to just click and it's gone. So it really makes you slow down and appreciate every moment and be grateful. Fair enough. And uh, I, I mentioned it at the at the top. Obviously, this was the card that you wanted to be on because of mm -hmm. uh, somebody who inspired you to get into mm -hmm. making martial arts and follow your dream. Um, ultimately, that hasn't come to fruition. Um how how does it feel? Is it a little bit bittersweet? Um, I, I know you you always like fighting the, on the Vegas cards. This is a big big spot in International Fight Week, but um, it could have been so much bigger. Yes, yeah, it could have. Mm. It sucks, sucks because I was excited for it. I didn't want to get my hopes up on it because I definitely didn't want to be massively disappointed. But like, obviously, when you find out that the person you're inspired by isn't going to be on the card. But also, like, the fact that the two of us could represent Ireland together on the biggest stage and have two of Ireland's greatest athletes together standing side by side, flying the flag and going, right, we're going to show up, we're going to do this together and we're going to take over again. Like, that would that was going to be something I was excited for. He'll be back. I have no doubt he'll be back. And it sucks for now, but everyone in the world wants to see that man fight again. And I'm sure you're hoping, like obviously you said you're hoping he's, he's going to come back or you're confident he's going to come back, but I'm sure before the career is done, you, you want to have that moment, if you know what I mean. Yeah, for sure. I think it's, it's it, it would be a dream come true for me as a fan, as someone who's completely and emotionally invested in his career and everything that he's done. You understand the power that kind of had and generated within Europe. But in Ireland, it was it was just so much more for people to latch on to and get excited about. Like this guy from Dublin, Ireland, who's like, like half an hour away from where I live, he's changing the, the MMA world. Like he's changing this sport. And he's having the time of his life doing it. So to be able to be emotionally invested in his career, for him to inspire me to then go, that's, that's the life I want to have. That's, the, that's what I want to do. I want to be a UFC fighter. I want to be a UFC world champion. I want to do something similar, but my way. To have that full circle moment of being sat at home in Dublin, Ireland, watching his fights and his press conferences and talking to my mates about it, to being sat side by side to him at the press conferences and just being like, fuck. Like, okay, this is cool. It's like Saturday night, we go out and we do it together. That would be a dream come true. And I, I fully believe me and Connor will get that. And maybe, maybe now we, we get, look, 
Having one person at the top is great to push it, but having two is even better. It's always better to have two. Maybe now we can get our Dublin Ireland show. Maybe we can bring the UFC back to Ireland again. I hope so. I've never been to Ireland. I was meant meant to go to Dublin for the press conference, but obviously found out at five o'clock in the morning that it got cancelled. But moving, but moving on, uh, moving on from that, um, Michael Venom Page. This is the fight that um, when he arrived in the UFC, I, I touted it as a, a potential massive clash. Not many people were too receptive to the idea, but um, now that this fight is a, a ahead of you, what, what's your thoughts on it? Because I know I did, it wasn't really initially on your radar. Obviously, you had Colby Covington, but um, respectfully, I can say he's gone missing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm being, I'm being respectful. I'm being, I'm being, res I'm saying it in a respectful manner. Well, you're saying the book of truth. That's the thing. Yeah, he yeah. was offered the fight, and he he turned and he basically just shut his laptop down, his phone down, and went, "Oh, I'm not going to be contactable. No way. <laughs> I want nothing to do with Amos Shadow Gary." When and that's that's kind of the way I feel about this. When I'm looking at fighting names like Kobe Covington, someone who's fought for the UFC World Title three times, someone who's been in the top five of the UFC for like, since I made my UFC debut, do you know what I mean? And and more. When I look at those names, I'm like, they're the guys I want to compete against. They're the guys I want to fight against. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. obviously stylistically and stuff like they prove that I'm well able to deal with that American wrestler style and, and the elite of the elite, the guys who have faced so many unbelievable fighters. When you go from the, the Kobe, the Kobe's of the world to the MVPs, it's like, all right, fine. Like I, I've, he doesn't, in my mind, he doesn't do the same as what a Kobe would. Like, I don't think the audience is as big. I think, obviously, MVP has done brilliantly with his brand and what Bellator and what they did to build him up as a fighter were phenomenal. Like, they did a great job together. It's great teamwork. Still just doesn't excite me as much as fighting a Kobe or an Usman or a Shavkat or a Jack or a Gilbert Burns or any of these names. It's just not exciting to me. And that's, that's just the truth. Fair enough, fair enough. And how have you prepared for Michael? Because... I don't know if there is anybody who can actually replicate his style. I'm sure you've been asked this a million times, but if you could just provide some small insight into the preparation for it. I think you have to, with MVP and with Michael and the way he is, you have to understand that he's very specific. And there is, not, like you said, there is not a lot of people in the world who have the same style as him. Not only that, but the same length, the same awkwardness, the same fidgety movements he's very very unique and that's why he has a lot of success in his career because people don't know how to deal with it if you listen to the first round after um mvp versus kevin holland kevin holland goes i know what you're gonna say faster than we thought and it's like that's because people don't understand movement and rhythm and timing and opportunity these people aren't intelligent enough to understand that realm of the game when you talk about reading people when you talk about knowledge of fight iq a lot of fighters and i would argue 99.9 percent .9 of fighters don't have the brain i have so i'm going to be able to read everything and it's just a case of when when am i going to take that opportunity to take him out when i'm going to take that shot that's going to put him on his back foot it's going to put him on his arse that's going to that's going to take his chin off his off his off his face all of those opportunities will arise to me it's just about picking the right moment. And final one from me. Um, Colby would have been the perfect stepping stone to, right. to a title shot. Do you think it, a win over Michael Bennett Page, do you, I, I know in terms of um, like in, in terms of name brand, he doesn't necessarily bring as much to, uh, as Colby because obviously Colby fought for a title three times, as you said. So I, would, I, I just want to clear that point up. I think as a name brand, he has a huge name and a huge brand. And when I say those things, it's not out of disrespect. It's more just you did something with another brand that that was phenomenal and well done to you, fair play to you. Like, I respect that. Like, that brand and you together was smart. But it isn't in the UFC and it isn't against these elite guys. And you haven't fought Usman and you haven't fought Leon and you haven't been in there with the best. And it's just that idea of like, I just think that. Either of those guys are big and they push me closer up the rankings to getting a title shot. I just feel like there's a little bit more of a holy shit, he did that to Kobe Covington than there is of a 
holy shit, he did that to Michael Venom Page. Fair Does that no, make I, sense? Yeah, no, no, you articulated that per perfectly, perfectly. So right. I think it's a case of like, when I win on Saturday night, it will, it will absolutely push me up the rankings. But I, I, I don't want, nor do I believe it warrants a world title fight. Fair enough. I think, there has to be more, I think there has to be more proved against competition that has been at that level for a long time. Not one fight in the UFC. No, I think I think that's uh, that's fair enough. Um, right. I think uh, my 10 minutes are up. Thank you very much for the time as always, Ian. Uh, hopefully we get to do this in person sometime soon and good oh, luck. I'm, I'm, back in, I'm back in the UK after my fight. Mm -hmm. So I, we're going to go back to the UK after the win. We're going to go celebrate in Ireland, see some friends and family. But absolutely, let's organize. I'll talk to Steve and Neve. Let's organize some media in person after the oh, fight. And awesome. then obviously, we'll probably I'll probably be going up to Manchester. See you guys will probably be there, right? Yeah, 100%, 100%. So we'll definitely see you then. So if we don't get it in person in London before then, we'll go do it in Manchester. All right, absolute legend, man. Take care. Hopefully, the weight cut goes well. And uh, good luck on Saturday night. Everything's perfect. All right, man. Take to, talk to you soon.